Welcome back to Lab Rat Scientific. Now today I want to talk about simple pendulum motion. Now before we get to the demonstrations and the experiments, I want to talk a little bit about the theory that governs the motion of pendulums. Let's start off by looking at the components of gravitational acceleration acting on the pendulum bob. Here's my pendulum bob deflected at some angle theta from the vertical. Now the bob is being acted upon by gravity. So it's a downward force, which is equal to the weight, which is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Now, relying on some basic geometry, we see that the theta angle shows up here on the bob. Now also recall some basic trigonometry. And when we do that, we can break down the forces in the direction parallel to the string and perpendicular to the string. First of all, we have the force is equal to mg cosine theta for the gravitational force parallel to the pendulum string. And we have force is equal to mg sine theta for the force that's perpendicular to the pendulum string. Now it's this perpendicular force that accelerates and decelerates the pendulum bob as it swings. Now, when the pendulum bob starts out, it accelerates as it swings downward. At the bottom of the swing, it has no acceleration or deceleration, but it's only for a brief moment as the bob begins to swing upward once again. Now, as the bob swings upward, it decelerates until it stops and then falls back down towards the vertical. Now let's take a look at the energies involved in the pendulum system. First of all, we have a gravitational potential energy, PE, and that's equal to mgh, where m is equal to the mass, G is equal to the acceleration due to gravity, and H is a height above some reference point. And we also have kinetic energy, Ke, and that's equal to 1 half mv squared. Now, as above, m is equal to mass, and v is the velocity of the pendulum bob. Now, to determine the potential energy, we need to know the height of the pendulum bob above the reference. The reference point will be when the bob is hanging straight down. Now here in this diagram, I have the pendulum raised to 30 degrees. Now the string length of the pendulum is shown here in L, and the height we want is here. Now, we're going to use some geometry and some trigonometry to calculate the height of the pendulum bob at any given time during the swing. Now, when the pendulum is hanging straight down, this is also the length, from the ceiling down to the center of gravity of the bob. Now what we're interested in here is this blue triangle. We're going to apply our trigonometry to this triangle. Now what we need to know is the segment length of this portion of the triangle. If we apply our trigonometry, we see that y is equal to length times the cosine of 30 degrees. Now the height is a difference between the length of the string and this y value. So height is equal to length minus the quantity of length times cosine 30 degrees. Now, if we calculate the instantaneous kinetic energy and potential energy, you'll see a plot like this. Now what I have here is the horizontal axis is the angle of swing. And you can see that I'm going to start the pendulum at an angle of 30 degrees. It's going to swing down through zero and then swing up on the negative side and then swing back and forth between minus 30 and 30 degrees. Now, the vertical axis is the energy of the system. Now, the purple plot is the potential energy, and the blue plot is the kinetic energy. Now, what you should notice, just before I release the pendulum, it's all potential energy. And since the pendulum bob is not moving at that point, there is zero kinetic energy. Now, what you should note is if I add up the potential and kinetic energy at any point along the swing, that sum is equal to the total energy of the system. Or in the case of this system, the maximum potential energy when I release the pendulum. So here I have 1.2 units of kinetic energy and 0.6 units of potential energy. Now if I add those two together, it becomes 1.8. So yes indeed, the potential energy plus the kinetic energy is equal to the maximum energy of the system. Now we've seen how we can calculate the instantaneous height of the pendulum bob, and thus the instantaneous potential energy of the bob. 
We can use that information to calculate the instantaneous velocity of the pendulum bob as it swings. Now here's mathematically the graph I showed earlier. We have the maximum potential energy, mgh max, is equal to the sum of the potential energy and kinetic energy as the pendulum bob swings. Now if we apply some basic algebra, we can rearrange the equation to solve for velocity. And you see that equation here. Now, these two mg's are the same thing. So I can pull those outside the parentheses. And these two masses are the same thing, so they cancel. So the equation for velocity becomes the square root of 2 times the acceleration due to gravity times the difference between the maximum height and the instantaneous height. So that allows me to calculate the velocity of the pendulum bob as the pendulum swings back and forth. Now we'll take a look at the equation that allows us to calculate the period of oscillation, or the amount of time it takes to make one complete swing. So the period, t, is going to be in seconds, is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. Now pi is 3.1416. L is the length of the pendulum string, and G, of course, is the acceleration due to gravity. Now what you notice is there's no mass in this equation. That tells us that the period of oscillation is independent of the mass of the pendulum bob. So a heavy pendulum will swing with the same period as a light pendulum bob, as long as the string length is the same. You'll also notice that the angle of release is not in this equation. So that means the system is independent of the release angle. So the period for a pendulum released at 30 degrees will be the same as the period for a pendulum released at 45 degrees. That's interesting. Now let's take a look at some demonstrations that validate these conclusions. Here are my two pendulums. I have one with a wooden bob, which is relatively heavy, and one with a styrofoam bob, which is relatively light. Now I set the string lengths so that they're equal. So that means the center gravity of both bobs are the same distance from the pivot point of the string here at the top. Now, as I showed earlier, the physics says these should both have the same period of oscillation since the pendulum length is the same, regardless of the weight of the pendulum bobs. So let's do a quick experiment to see if that's true. Let them both go. And for the first couple swings, they do stay in unison. However, over time, you'll see that the styrofoam bob slows down and they get out of phase. That's due to aerodynamics, not the physics involved with the pendulum itself, but the aerodynamics. Drag has a greater influence on a lighter styrofoam ball. So if you do these kind of experiments at home, you have to take that into consideration. But the first couple swings, they stay in unison until drag kind of takes over. So here I have my two pendulums, but they have different lengths. The wooden pendulum has a longer string. The styrofoam pendulum has a shorter string. So the theory states that the shorter string pendulum should have a shorter period of oscillation, or in other words, it should swing faster. So let's do an experiment to see if that's true. Release them, same time. And you should notice that the styrofoam ball, the shorter pendulum is swinging faster, has a shorter period of oscillation than the longer string pendulum. So it seems that that theory holds true as well. Now the equations that govern the oscillation period are independent of the release angle of the bob. So let's go ahead and show that. I'll have a small release angle for the wooden bob and a larger release angle for the styrofoam bob. And they get back to my hands at the same time. Again, so it's independent of the release angle of the pendulum. Now why is that? Well, the higher pendulum accelerates for a longer period and picks up a higher velocity, so it covers that distance in the same amount of time as a shorter swing for the wooden pendulum. Now let's take a look at this from a side view. I'm going to start both pendulums from different angles, and we should see them swing back through the vertical at the same time. Let's try that again. Now. Since the pendulum is an energy conversion device, it'll start off with a certain amount of potential energy given the height I release it from. It'll convert that energy into kinetic energy at the bottom of the swing, and then convert it back to potential energy at the other end, and vice versa coming back. But the system will never add energy if I just simply release the pendulum bob. 
So that means the pendulum bob will not return to a point any higher than it started. So let's do an experiment to see if that's true. Well, sure enough, that pendulum, this bowling ball, didn't come back and knock out my teeth. So the energy didn't change. The maximum potential energy was the same potential energy after it made one complete swing. So, now when doing this experiment, I do not want to import any additional kinetic energy at the beginning of the swing. In other words, I don't want to push the bowling ball because that will increase the energy of the system. So the bowling ball will achieve a higher height at the far side of the swing and then come back and achieve that same higher height on the way back. That means if I had my face in the way, the bowling ball would kiss me in the teeth and that wouldn't be good. But luckily, I have a little crash dummy here so we can do that demonstration without getting hurt. All right, so here's my test dummy sitting up here on his perch. And if I repeat the experiment I did with my own face, he should be okay. I'm not gonna impart any kinetic energy to the bowling ball. Just simply release it, and it should come back to a point no higher than its initial release point. Now, however, if I impart some kinetic energy and raise the energy of the system, the bowling ball will achieve a higher height at the back end, and as it comes back, it should achieve that same higher height on the back end of the swing and it should knock my test dummy off his perch. So let's see what happens. All right, give it a little shove. And sure enough, the bowling ball comes back to a higher height because it has higher energy because I imparted that kinetic energy to begin with and it knocks my test dummy off his perch. That would not be a good thing if I had my face in front of that bowling ball. Now pendulums don't always involve pendulum bobs and strings. Anything that's very narrow, long, and somewhat flexible can act like a pendulum. Now in sounding rockets, payloads sometimes use flexible booms, which contain sensors to make scientific measurements while the payload flies through space. Now this payload picture here on the right hand side shows a long, narrow boom. Now, when these booms are deployed, in a lot of cases, they flop down and hit a stop for their fully deployed position. But since the boom is long and flexible, it can overshoot and oscillate back and forth a lot like a simple pendulum. Now let's take a look at an actual sounding rocket payload undergoing a boom deployment test. You can see they flop down and deploy. When you hit the stops, they go into their periodic oscillation a lot like a simple pendulum. Now let's take a look at a couple of simple lab experiments that demonstrate this particular motion. Here's my little setup for a rigid boom system. It sort of simulates what's going on with a sounding rocket payload. This point here is uh, where the hinge point is and uh, where the stops are. And I'm using a uh, piece of PVC pipe as the rigid boom. And I'm just gonna tweak it here and you can see how it oscillates. But over time, it damps out. Again, you see a relatively high frequency at this particular length. Now let's look at a longer boom and see what happens. Here's a longer boom, same PVC pipe, same material, just a longer string length essentially. So let's uh, tweak it and get it to oscillate. And you see the amplitude is much larger on this longer boom. You'd expect that. And you'll see that the period seems to be longer as well. Longer boom, longer pendulum, longer period of swing. And again, this is in the other system it damps out relatively quickly. Well, that's it. Hopefully you have a better understanding of simple pendulum motion. And I hope to see you next time on LabRat Scientific.